Radiance here. In this video, we'll conduct a React masterclass, during which I'll share how I've created this attractive timeline, alternatively known as a calendar view, to display work sessions over here. While the code for Increaser sits in a private repository, you can locate all the reusable components, hooks, and utilities featured in this video at the React Kit repository. I'll trust you'll find lots of useful content in this masterclass, particularly when it comes to absolute positioning and time management. Our component is constructed from four principal sections. Navigation between days of the week, summary of work sessions with a project breakdown, a timeline featuring blocks of work which also present the current time and show the amount of a workday that remains. Lastly, a flow to add a work session, but we won't be covering this feature in this video. We'll need to reuse some state in multiple components within day overview. So let's create a provider using React context. Day overview provider will effectively deliver sets for the current day, current time, start and end types of the timeline, start of the current day, end of the workday and a function to change the current day. We will interact with the context using the use day overview hook, which will generate an error if we attempt to utilize it outside of the provider. To obtain the current time and re-render the component, we will employ the use rhythmic re-render hook. We will record the current day as a timestamp in the current day state and distribute the set current day function to provider or consumer to modify it. We will filter the sets to include only those within the current day, and if the user in the focus mode, we will add a current set to the list. Based on the current time sets and the user's preferred start and end of the workday, we will compute the start and end of the timeline. We encapsulate our component in a panel container, which spaces out the content inside and outlines the component with a border. We will continue to maintain all the hard-coded sizes and distances in the config.ts file. The week navigation component presents the specific day of the week and enables the user to navigate between days. We will position the weekdays inside a CSS grid container abstracted behind the same with children role component. To cycle over weekdays, we will utilize the weekdays array that contain the names of the days of the week. To procure the commencement of a weekday, we do simple math by adding days converted to milliseconds to the start of the week timestamp. The active day will be the one that corresponds with the day started at timestamp, and we will disable all the days that fall in the future. For better accessibility experience and keyword support, we will render an invisible radio input inside every option. The weekday option component will style the label component, changing the text border and background color based on the is active and is enabled props. The amount overview components provides an overview of the current day's work sessions and projects breakdown. First, we display the name of the current day along with the total time spent on work sessions compared to the designated time for the day. Normally, you would opt to work less over the weekend, so the allocated time will be different for Saturday and Sunday. To visualize the breakdown of projects, you will employ the project's allocation line component. To estimate the total time spent on each project, we will exploit the get projects total record helper. Day timeline components form the most complex part of our display, heavily stocking up on the absolutely positioned elements. The major segments of the component are a block highlighting the time left before the end of the workday, a timeline marker showing the hours of the day, a current time indicator, a workday end status showing how much time left before the end of the workday, work blocks displaying the work sessions, a floating button permitting edit to the last work session. The wrapper uses Flex1 to accommodate all the available space, and we use min height to guarantee the component is at least 320 pixels tall. The container will be an absolutely positioned element with overflow outer to permit scrolling when space is inadequate. The content will be a relatively positioned element occupying all available space within the container. Since a lengthy timeline may not fit into the screen, we set a mean height for the content element based on the timeline duration so that one hour is at least 40 pixels tall. The workday left block component will visualize the remaining time until the end of the work. It only makes sense for today, so it will hide if the user is looking at a past week. To convert ratios for the top and height attributes to percentages, we employ the two persons helper. The timeline marks component will portray the hours of the day. We rely on a recursive function get hours in range to acquire the hours of the day between two timestamps. To center the text with the time and line, we use the 
position absolute center horizontally abstract component. It combines a rubber with zero height, container with horizontally aligned content, and content with absolute position. Briefly, it involves a lot of wrapping, but as a user of the component, you access a pleasant API for absolute position. The current time component strongly resembles one of the markers in the timeline marks component. An interesting CSS trick here involves the absolute outline helper to create a border around the current time. As the outline is an absolutely positioned element, we have to turn the time component into an absolute as well. When the user observes the current day and it's not yet the end of the workday, we present the workday end status component to display how much time remains before work concludes. Format, we use the proficient format duration help. A work block is an assembly of sets that are close together. As per Andrew Huberman, one of the productivity secrets involves organizing work into 90 minutes blocks. That's why we desire to categorize sessions into blocks and highlight their duration to the user. Since I also incorporate blocks on the server side to create a scoreboard of the most productive users, the getBlocks function is contained in the entities utils package. To show a dashed line around the block, we'll once again use the absolute outline helper. If the session is too short, we won't display the duration. To alternate between different timings, we use the convert duration helper. To illustrate a work session, we have a designated component. We assign a session a miss background using the got color helper, which simplifies interaction with start component theme. To link a session with a project, we'll display a small identifier in the form of a vertical line. Here we utilize the get project color helper to retrieve the project's color. Lastly, we'll introduce a floating button to modify the last work session. The manage last session component will generate a menu component with options to either edit or remove the last session. To display the opener, we use the manage set opener component, which receives a set and essential props for the menu component to activate and position the menu. Here we position the opener absolutely with a 4 pixels offset from the end of the session.